All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, electrical circuit tester. This is the INOVA 5420. Now, at first glance, it may look like your typical electrical circuit tester, such as a Power Probe or many other brands out here, and you would be almost right. But we're going to go over the hardware first. I'm going to show you a few unique features that I think that this one um, has versus um, some other ones. And um, let's go ahead and jump right in. So first of all uh, i'll go over those two features first is that first of all if you swivel the head here it turns it sort into like this this uh pistol style so if you stick it in say to a very hard to reach place you can still see the screen here which is pretty cool the second thing that's um pretty cool here is that if you get up close on it you look at this you can do 24 volts for heavy duty five volts which not that you know you see that sometime but this also has a three volt function as well so if you're unfamiliar with how to set this up you would just connect the leads to the uh, respective uh, ground and positive wires to your battery that would actually activate this unit and how to apply voltage depends on um, what voltage you have in this case this is 12 volts so if you was in a 24 volt system if you just push up on the v it would supply 12 volts if you wanted to supply that to a component or to a line. And likewise, if you go over to the five volts, if you push up, it would supply five volts to that component or line. And lastly, you swing on over to this three volts, it would do the exact same thing. And there you have three volts. Now, if you wanted to supply ground to a circuit or to a component, you just push the ground button down and there you have that. And um, you can supply ground. Not only can you do that, but you can actually just touch this to um, components to see if you have power or if you have ground. I'm going to demonstrate that when we go over here to our first example. Um, but with that being said, I'll show you some more things that make this thing a lot useful. If, you're, if you've never used one of these or... Um, you might have probably used them, but um, or maybe a little afraid to use them because maybe you've heard of like burning up components and circuits. First thing you're going to need to do if you really want to understand this thing is get you a wiring diagram. Now, as you can see here on this wiring diagram, if you look at the top, that's coming from the fuse blocks. And that's you're going to see that junction right here in the middle. That's going to be 12 volt components that's coming and that's on this uh, vehicle here. Now we take a look at the bottom, you see the five volt reference coming out. So it looks like we have three components here that will output a five volt reference. So with that said, now you know that, and again, this is a very simplistic situation here because again, this is a 1987 uh, Monte Carlo SS. Newer cars, obviously the wiring diagram is gonna be way more, um, uh, a, a lot more to read, let's just say, but you get the basic idea here. Also, what might can help you is that sometime um, you can get these things here, like um, to find out where the components at. Because again, on older cars, now newer cars are probably a bit different, but on older cars, components don't look like they look today. So, also getting a picture of what they look like, and also give you a description here at the bottom of where it's located on top of the right wheel. Uh, right hand wheelhouse. So this combined with the wiring diagram really will set you up for success for using this uh, circuit tester. With that said, let's go ahead and spin the camera around. We're going to jump to the first real world test. We're going to do three real world tests today. And I'm going to make sure you, by the time you finish watching this video, you're going to know how to properly use this. So the first thing you do before you start testing, and as I mentioned earlier, you put your ground and your positive on their respective terminals of the battery. You're just going to take this, and this is a good demonstration here. If you want to know if power or ground is in a circuit, for example, you want, but this is also testing the unit here before you begin using it. You touch the power here, as you'll see, we have 12.6 volts, and we touch the ground here. It lets you know that you have a ground and that you have zero volts. So you know that it's hooked up right and you have it functioning properly. So now uh, we're going to go ahead over here and uh, disconnect this component wiring and we're going to test it out. All right, now so going back to our diagram here, what I want to test is the uh, inputs and outputs of the barometric uh, pressure sensor here. 
Now, what we do know is that the gray line going in is the output reference, five volt reference on the computer. So the gray line in here should have five volts. And um, the other, well, that should have five volts when the switch is turned on. Now, when the car is running, um, as you see over here, the barometric pressure sensor input, that possibly would vary. But since we're just going to cut the switch on and we just want, we're going to test it without the switch to make sure there's no power coming through this. Then we're going to cut the switch on and then just see what type of voltage are we getting. What we want to see is five volts in the gray wire and we want to see zero volts in the other two wires. So let me go ahead and uh, undo this wire here and I'll begin this testing here. So let me take this off. And this is another point of the pictures that shows you where this component was at because um, I would have probably been looking somewhere everywhere for this thing here. Let me take my time here. Oh, got that off. So here's our um, wiring situation here. Now you can already, I'm going to demonstrate this. You already see how well, like right now, if I did this, you couldn't see the screen, like for example. But if I turn it like this and now do it, you are able to see the voltages that it's carrying. So what we're going to do, all you're going to do to test to see what's coming through these wires, you're just going to take the tip. You're not going to press anything and just touch the wires with the tip. We got zero volts. Turn this way so you can see a little better. We got zero volts and we got zero volts. That's exactly what we want to see with the car off. Now, let me go turn on the switch and uh, see what happens. All right, got that switch going there. So now what we're going to what we're trying to determine is now are we getting the 5 volt reference from the computer through here? And what that'll tell us is that is this wiring integrity good and is it computer outputting what it should? So this is what this test here is going to tell us. All right, so again, we press nothing. We just stick it straight into the wiring harness and check that one has uh that is the uh black one which has uh should have zero volts this is the middle wire which is a red and white wire has zero volts as it should now this guy here should be putting out five volts as everything at least come in front of the computer correctly and there we have that five volts just like that so there you go there's that first real world test all we wanted to know was was this wiring um diagram functioning properly and I'm not wiring diagram, this wiring harness functioning properly. And there's an ECM putting out five volts and it sure enough is. So with that said, let's move on to the next test. All right. So the next test involves the EGR solenoid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this line with the switch turned off and turned on to make sure because I'm that we're getting 12 volts coming through here because I want to restore. A lot of people delete the EGR valve, but I want to restore mine uh, correctly. So in this here is an EGR valve. So what you can do also with this is that you can actually test this unit. So we're going to actually input voltage in this as well. So let me go ahead and get this test here started. So the first thing we want to do is come right here. I'm hoping you guys can see this here. I think you should be able to see this. If I touch this wire here, we get a ground. Okay. We touch the other wire. We get nothing and that's what the switch off okay now let's go turn the switch on we should be hitting 12 volts i think because i don't want to start the car up i don't think i have to start the car for anything to do with this so let's go ahead and test it all right so now with this test here see if we can get this in a situation where you can see Oh, there we go. 12 volts. That's exactly what we want to see. On the other side, I'm getting no volts. So basically one wire must be turns to is grounded when the car is off, but has the 12 volts when it's coming. Um, uh, uh, you know, when the car is on and the other one just must be a return wire. So that's pretty good to know. So now let me move you guys over here and we're going to go ahead and test out this uh, solenoid valve. All right, guys, so now what we're going to actually do, we're actually going to input some power into this component. This right here is the EGR uh, solenoid uh, valve. And all I want to do is just see, let me accidentally pull that out. All I want to do is just see, is this thing even firing? Now, although I might get some reaction from this when I add power to it, does not mean it's working properly, but at least it's a step 
in the direction that I want to get to, and that is, um, is it the wiring that's a problem here or the EGR solenoid valve? So we know for certain the wiring ain't a problem. So if I cannot get the EGR solenoid valve to like function properly, it's more than likely this, even, even if it will accept some, 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 you know, some input and react to it. So let's take a look at this here. So this is what I got here. I just got this kind of, this uh, uh, cord here is the grounding cord from the um, actual unit itself. As you can see that one grounding cord, I got an alligator clip connected to a back probe just so I could stick that down inside of the hole here and, and connect that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna just press that up against the side, kind of hard with my finger just to hold it in place. And now what we're gonna do, activate 12 volts and let's do this here. You hear that? So what we know, see, so what we know is that there is some current, it is clicking like it should, but is it functioning properly? That's the question. I don't know. So what now what I'm going to do, and, and, and even though it's not part of this video, I need to look up specifications on resistance here and things like that. So with that said, that has been this part. Now the third and final test is going to be on the fuel sender. I made that test, I did that test yesterday and I posted a short on YouTube about it. So I'm just going to take that short and I'm going to add it to this video right here. And you guys are going to enjoy that and then see the full breadth of how this thing can actually work in three real, in three real world, you know, um, applications of it. Ever since I had this car, the fuel gauge inside the instrument cluster did not work. So what I decided to do here was disconnect the fuel sender from the uh, gauge cluster. You can see we have power there. So when I apply a ground across this power, what I find is that I have some very good news coming up and that's to show that the actual hand does work on the gauge. So that means that it is not a fault of the instrument cluster or it is not a fault of the line running to the instrument cluster. So the next thing, that I did was I cut the ground strap away from the fuel center. As you can see, this thing is terribly corroded, but I had to go ahead and do my due diligence. So I tested it anyway. So I applied a ground to it with this uh, pro power probe unit that I have. And um, well, exactly what you think happens. Once I apply the ground to it right here, we see the fuel hand not moving. So that means I'm going to be installing a fuel sender in this car and I'm going to be installing a new gas tank on top of that. All right, guys, that's been the Inova 5420. Um, this thing is a pretty nice little handy thing to have. Um, if you cannot order that from my link in the description, they also sell these things in auto parts stores as well. But I've actually seen this in several auto parts. So this exact, that exact unit right here. So anyway, guys, take care. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's always nice to uh, demonstrate something with real world tests so people can see how it works. And so maybe it might help you out if you want to get one. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.